Okay guys, in this video we'll be talking about the derivative of inverse trig functions. Alright, what are the inverse trig functions? We have the sine inverse, the cos inverse, the tan inverse and other inverse functions. Let's see how to differentiate these functions, the derivative of these functions. Okay, if you have y equal to sine inverse of x, we have sine inverse of x. Let's see how to differentiate this function. Okay, now if you look at this function, we can actually rewrite this function to be like this y equal to x over sine. That makes sense, right? Because sine inverse is 1 upon sine times x. So we can see this as 1 upon sine times x, x over this, because this is sine inverse, 1 upon sine. You can see it that way. And if we cross multiply this, we'll have x equal to sine y. Now, another way we can also tackle this is to say, take the sine on both sides. I can have y equal to sine inverse of x. Take sine here, take sine here. If I take sine of y and I take sine of sine inverse of x, this will break this. So I have sine y equal to x. I can also accomplish it that way. This and this are all fine. But let's still work with this. So with this, we can now differentiate x with respect to y. More like our x is the dependent variable and y is the independent variable. The x, the y. So when we differentiate this, we have the x, the y equal to when I differentiate sine y, I will have cos y. From this, I can now find the y, the x. Simply invert this. You know, this is over one. Simply invert this, I will have the y, the x equal to one upon cos y. So this is the y, the x. But on the right hand side, I need my right hand side to be in terms of x and not y, in terms of x. So I need to convert this cos y to be in terms of x. I have x equal to sine y. I can convert cos y to be in terms of sine and then relate it to x. Now, there is this trig identity that can help us connect this cos and sine and then translate to this. We know that sine squared y plus cos squared y is equal to 1. This is an important trig identity we should know. And from this, we can say that cos squared y is equal to 1 minus sine squared y, right? And so cos y will be square root of 1 minus sine squared y. If we should do that, this means that the square root of this, cos y will be square root of 1 minus sine squared, sine y is x. So sine squared y will be x squared. And that means that this place will give us 1 upon cos y now is square root of 1 minus x squared. And this will be our dy dx. So directly, if you are giving y equal to sine inverse of x, its derivative is simply 1 upon root 1 minus x squared. You don't really need to go through this um, length to find the y dx. Whenever you are giving sine inverse of x, its derivative is 1 upon root 1 minus x squared. Let's look at this. y equal to cos inverse of x. We want to find dy dx. Like we said earlier, we can write this as y equal to x over cos. Because this is cos inverse, x over cos. And we can cross multiply this to have x equal to cos y. Okay. From this, we can now find the x dy. The x dy will now be, the function of cos y is a negative sine y. And definitely this is over 1 because we want to find dy dx. We are looking for dy dx. So we can just invert this to get dy dx to be a negative 1 upon sine y. 
this will go up, this will come down, and you have a negative by the side. But we want to keep our right hand side in terms of x and not y, not sine y. We want to keep it in terms of x. Remember the trig identity we wrote earlier that helps us relate this, relate sine y to cos y, and then we can convert it to x. All right. So we have that sine squared y plus cos squared y is equal to one. From here we can find sine squared y to be one minus cos squared y. All right. And sine y will be square root of 1 minus cos squared y and sine y will be square root of 1 minus cos y from here is x so cos squared y will be x squared okay so we have a negative 1 upon sine y now becomes square root of 1 minus x squared and this will be our dy dx. So whenever you have y equal to cos inverse of x, dy dx will be negative 1 upon square root of 1 minus x squared. Remember the last one we did. When it is y equal to sine inverse of x, it is just 1 upon, not a negative, positive, 1 upon square root of 1 minus x squared. But when it is cos inverse, it's a negative 1 upon square root of 1 minus x squared. That's our dy dx. Let's also look at this, y equal to tan inverse of x. We want to differentiate this function. Like we said earlier, we can write this as y equal to x upon tan. Alright, so we can take this here, we have x equal to tan y. That's correct, that makes sense. And then the rest needs to find the x dy. And later I'll transform it to dy dx. You can find dx dy. If I differentiate tan y, we've talked about derivative of tan x, right? When we talked about quotient rule. If you differentiate tan x, it is sec squared x, right? So if you differentiate tan y, it will be sec squared y. If you have any problem with this derivative, you can just check back our video on quotient rule to understand how to differentiate tan y. Alright, so if I differentiate this, I have sec squared y, and definitely is over 1, because I want to invert this. So to find dy dx, I will have 1 upon sec squared y. But like we said earlier, I don't want to keep my right hand side in terms of y, I want to keep it in terms of x. dy dx equal to some values of x on the right hand side. Okay. And... It means I have to transform this to be in terms of x. And I have to look at a trig identity that can help me translate this to tan y and then take it to x. And we have that sec squared y minus tan squared y is equal to 1. That's a very important trig identity. That sec squared y minus tan squared y is equal to 1. For sine and cos, uh, that thing that it is is sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1 or sine squared y plus cos squared y is equal to 1 but for sec and tan there's a minus in between all right so to find sec squared y we simply turn this over to the 1 plus tan squared y so sec squared y that's sec squared y here becomes 1 plus but if you look at this we have x is tan y so tan squared y will be x squared. If x is tan y, tan squared y will be x squared. So we can rewrite this here to be 1 over 1 plus x squared. And that will give us our dy dx. This is the derivative of tan inverse of x. 1 upon 1 plus x squared. Okay guys, with these examples, we can differentiate any inverse trig function using the approach we've taken so far. We can differentiate sec inverse of x cosec inverse of x and any other inverse trig functions we want to differentiate. Alright, let's look at this example here. y equal to sine inverse of exponential x ln x. Alright, this is a very interesting example and we're going to apply all the rules of differentiation we've learned so far. Now, if you look at this function, you see that there's a chain of functions. We've learned how to differentiate chain functions. 
right? There's a chain of function here, and inside each chain, there's a product of functions. So we have a product of function, we have a chain of function, and we have an inverse trig function. Okay, how do we tackle this problem? First, we need to identify the inside function. We need to identify the inside function. Let's call it u exponential x ln x. Let's call it u. And our y will now be the sine inverse of u. Alright? Y will now be sine inverse of u. We need to differentiate this and also differentiate this. And then apply chain rule, right? Because this is a chain function. Now, to differentiate this, we need to apply product rule because it's a product of functions, yeah? Exponential x mean x. So, our du dx, we apply product rule. What is product rule? Hold your first function, differentiate the next one, 1 upon x. Plus, hold the last one, differentiate the first one, exponential x. Remember, the derivative of exponential x is new exponential x. And from this part, if we want to find dy, we are differentiating y with respect to u, right? dy du. Remember, the differential of sine inverse of x is 1 upon square root of 1 minus x squared. So the differential of sine inverse of u will also be 1 upon square root of 1 minus u squared. As simple as that. Sine inverse of x, 1 upon square root 1 minus x squared. Sine inverse of u will be 1 upon square root 1 minus u squared. Okay, the next step is just to find our dy dx by multiplying these two derivatives. Our dy dx will now be du dx times dy du. And that will be, if I take the whole of this, I have exponential x over x plus ln x exponential x. That is my du dx times my dy du is 1 upon square root of 5 minus u squared. But remember, I need to keep my u in terms of x because I'm looking for dy dx with respect to x. I need to convert this to be in terms of x. And this will be, this part is exponential x over x plus ln x exponential x times 1 upon root 1 minus. My u now is this, exponential x ln x, u squared or uh, squared. And that would be my dy dx. So guys, this is how we differentiate inverse trig functions. If I also have a division of functions, yeah, I'll simply have to apply my quotient rule, differentiate that, then differentiate sine inverse of that function. Sine inverse of u is 1 upon square root 1 minus u squared. And then multiply these two derivatives together. That would be my dy dx. And please, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, kindly do well to subscribe to the channel so you get notifications when I upload new videos and so this channel can grow and more persons can get the opportunity to learn from these videos.